It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So if you have your Bible, turn to Philemon verse 6, or if you know the verse, it's on your phone, however you want to do it. Philemon verse 6, and the King James Version says that the communication, the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you because you are in Christ. The acknowledging. Um, I think another translation says, I pray that everyone who meets you will catch your faith and learn from you how wonderful it is to live in Christ. How many like to live in Christ? Acknowledge who you are in Christ. And so he says, the acknowledging of every good thing that's yours in Christ. And so Philemon verse 1, verse 6, I think it's the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible says, I pray that the participation in sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus and unto his glory. So the Amplified Bible says precise knowledge, you know, appreciation, recognition, understanding of every good thing that is ours because of our identification with Christ, who we are in Christ. The word identification just simply means to consider and treat as one and the same. Identification, or identical, or identified. So your identity, now you find out who you are in Christ Jesus, not based on what your parents or ancestry.com told you or experience if you had or how you feel. It's based on who you are and what you have because you're in Christ. Amen. Everybody say in Christ. So um, we're going to look at your identification with Christ, and he says, actually, for your faith to become effectual, or for your faith to be uh, contagious, amen. In other words, uh, your faith is not really uh, in a um, where people catch or catch your faith is not really in a form that they can catch it if you are not living in the consciousness and the reality of who you are, what you have in Christ, amen. So we're going to look a little bit on some scriptures about who you are and what you have in Christ. So you have to jump over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and right underneath that, verse 21. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ, anyone, if any person is in Christ. So really, Paul's description of what happened when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, when you got saved, is that now you are in Christ. Uh, one writer actually said, you have been in Christed. So you are in Christ. So you can say, well, I got saved. You can say, I got born again. One translation says, you got refathered by God. Amen. Another one, which is amazingly clear, is I have received eternal life. Amen. And then that life really is the life, spiritual life that's really in Christ that it says in Ephesians 2 that when God raised Christ from the dead, that he made us alive together with him. Uh, Amplified says it real good. He, he uh, gave us the very same life that he gave to Christ. So it is that spiritual life or eternal life or it's the life that was in Christ. It is that life that comes into your spirit when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. When, when you make Jesus your Lord, that eternal life comes in your spirit, number one, and that's the same identical life that's in Christ, which is overcoming life, resurrection life, the God kind of life, and that comes right into your spirit the moment you make Jesus your Lord. It is that life that makes you a new creature. Let's try it again. I said, is that life that makes you a new creature? Amen. The devil cannot dominate any person with this life. Well, I feel like slapping somebody already. Amen. I mean, 
I said, the devil cannot dominate any man, any woman, any person that has this life on the inside of him. Amen. And so that's why 1 John 5, 11 says, he that hath the Son hath what? Life. Amen. He that does not have the Son does not have life. And so really, uh, when we're talking to people about being born again, well, one translation is being refathered by God, is that this life comes into your spirit. It is this life that puts you in union with Christ, and it is this life that makes you a new kind of creature that never existed before. Hallelujah. All right, let's try that side over. I said, a new kind of human you know, Paul's always talking about the new man. Come on, put on the new man. He's talking about really this new man produced by what Jesus has done for us on the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection, our identification with Christ. And uh, I think <laughs> P.C. Nelson, um, uh, I went to Bible college four years, so I got a little extra time to argue in class. So, uh, so they, they didn't like some of the terms I used, you know, like, boy, a new creature in Christ, and I'm talking about faith, you know, and how faith works, right? And so faith begins right there when your identification with Christ, in other words, you're seated up here with him, so you never fight the fight of faith down here. You always fight it from up there. So you're never really fighting for victory. You're always just fighting from victory, raised up and seated together with him. So it'd help you every morning just to confess and acknowledge, I have eternal life, I have the God kind of life, I have the same life that raised Christ from the dead, that life dwells in my spirit right now, that is uh, the life of God, same life that's in God, that life will rise up on the inside of me, and that will quicken my mind, it makes me smarter, hallelujah, and it will work in my body, get in my blood, it'll get in my bones, I have eternal life, I, a present possession, I have eternal life. I'll give you some definitions in just a moment here. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's where you start out. That's not where you finish up. <laughs> that's where you start out is who you are in Christ. Amen. So we're going to talk about the two words just for a moment, in Christ, and because uh, those two words, really, Dad Hagen's the one that brought those words to, to my attention uh, and to many people, to our attention, uh, while he was teaching on faith, he just simply said the highest kind of faith is you must know who you are in Christ, your identification with Christ. So when Dad Hagen brought that to our attention, then I was 17 years old. 17 years old, he said, go through primarily Paul's letters, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, go through those letters. Every time you see the two words in Christ, stop, underline that scripture because that's describing something you are. All right, let's try it one more time. Not, not something you're trying to be. Not something you're going to be, you know, after you've been in church for 20 years. He said, no, I was describing something God did for you in Christ. That's who you are, something you are, and that's something you have because when you made Jesus your Lord, you are now in Christ, in him, or in whom. Well, there's 130 to 160 of those phrases. So when I was 17 years old, I just went through and underlined all of them. And then I made the list, wrote them down. Then I had a little cassette recorder by my bed, and I put them on a cassette recorder. So every morning I push play and hear myself saying, I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. Everything has become new. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Some people say, who you think you are? You say, how much time you got, man? I got, I, I got a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> now, so we're not talking about being arrogant, but we are talking about definitely being confident, amen, what God has done for us in Christ, amen? In Christ. Well, the two words in Christ um, just have Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, and the word in. Really difficult to mess those up. <laughs> so Dad Hagen would say, you look a lot better in Christ than you do outside him. Amen. 
So we started going through those words, in Christ, you got a preposition in the word Christ. So I had a good friend there, and I don't know where Andy Stumpy is this morning, but he was over here the other day. Uh, Andy's around. There's Andy back there and his wife, God bless you. And with his dad, Leon Stump, had just come back from California, got saved in California, and he was playing in a, in a band, uh, 13th floor elevators or something like that. And so he had a harmonica, like Bob Dylan, you know, and play the guitar, and, and he'd just gotten saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. He came back from California. California. His mom had been praying for him. He comes back and he's saved. He's like a new creature. So when he came back, wow, man, he's on fire for God. Amen. And so together we spent all our spare time studying in Christ, in him, in whom scriptures, and then we would compare them in 10 different translations, 20 different translations, 30 different translations, finally in 121 different translations. Because if you don't know Greek, if you can get these different translations, then it's going to break out a few different English words. So most translators will not mess with the two words in Christ. If any of them, oh, maybe only the Amplified, which we call the woman's Bible, but the Amplified Bible because it has more words, so that only the, the Amplified Bible would say, in union with are engrafted into Christ. All right, let's try that one out for a minute. Because really that's a good picture or description of being engrafted into Christ. Y'all still here? So we kind of got some illustration of being engrafted when our grandson Dylan, you know, with leukemia and fought, fought it for three years. And then they came back and said, well, you know, uh, leukemia's back. And we said, well, we thought it was in remission. They said, yeah, but there's another kind of remission called molecular remission where there's no evidence he ever had leukemia. The only way to produce that is we're going to have to have a bone marrow transplant, stem cell transplant, which means we're going to have to have a donor. So they got to find a donor. You know, it's going to match Dylan. And so they went through the three brothers and finally came up with Gavin. Gavin was not that happy about that because they're going to be taking your, your stem cells for four days, amen, and he's swole up all over, and we told him, you are saving your brother's life. We'll take you to, you know, Target or wherever you want to go. So there's, there's at least you can, Caleb can tell you more about the process, but the day came that, that they took um, Gavin's stem cells in a big red bag of blood, put it on a, 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 a pole that kind of looked like a cross. And nobody was in the room except for Caleb and Alicia. We were outside through the window watching, and they said this is the most critical six hours in the whole process because if Dylan does not receive Gavin's stem cells, so now that's all he's going to have to receive it. All right, so now we're surrounding him with, boy, when, when Gavin's stem cells go into Dylan, he's going to say, welcome, we're glad to see y'all, come on in. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and so now the process takes place, and, and here comes uh, Gavin's stem cells into Dylan, and during those six hours, and he received them perfectly. But they actually will do a test over a period of the next week or two. They do a test to see how much of Dylan is now Gavin. Y'all still here? <laughs> In other words, they did a test. They said because some people actually receive the stem cells and never get more than 50% of the donor. So they did a, a test on Dylan, and then the doctor came back, and he went, now Dylan is 100% Gavin. Matter of fact, their, uh, Gavin's identity is so changed, you'll have to have two birthday parties for him because he's not who he was when he was born the first time. He's right now who he was because of Gavin's stem cells, which means he'll have a change of identity, which means that if 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 Gavin was convicted of a crime, Dylan could be convicted of the same crime because they have the same identical DNA. I wonder if God found a donor on the cross, amen, and sent his blood, amen, and he, amen. Come on, you're not just a forgiven sinner. Come on, you're not just somebody to go to heaven. 
You are now in union with the master in Christ and his DNA is on the inside of you. Yeah. Right now, I said right now, not someday, right now. What kind of creature are you anyway? Amen. Amen. So, so the donor is the Lord Jesus. His blood. His stem cells. Why? God's going to produce what? He's going to produce molecular remission, which that means there will not be one cell left in Dylan's body that proves he ever had leukemia. Old things pass away and everything becomes new. There's not one cell left in you of what you used to be. You are 100% righteous, 100% new creature. You're the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God before ordained that you should walk in there. Come on, you're the workmanship of God. God said, I'm working this for you. Woo! So your identification with Christ who you are in Christ, your identification. Well, you know, if you travel a lot, you know, you're going to have to carry some identification, right? You ain't going to go far if you don't. If you want to go fly somewhere, they're going to say, you got your identification. You can say, well, I'm standing right here. <laughs> no, you're going to have to have passport, driver's license, so a few years ago, we were flying from Denver somewhere, and, and uh, we're, we're heading out just in time, you know, to get there and check in, go preach wherever we're going from Denver, and we was leaving Trenna's mom and dad's house, so we've been driving about an hour or so, and the sound comes out of the passenger seat, which was Trenna, and said, oh, no. <laughs> That's never a good sound, you know. You're like, oh, my God. So... Oh, no, what's happened? She said, I left my purse and my driver's license at the house. I'm like, Lord, help me right now. <laughs> Lord, help me. So I kind of wrote it a while because I knew the Lord has provided that I carried an extra identification in my briefcase, which was her passport. So I had my passport, her passport, so she had lost her driver's license. So I didn't want to tell her that right off. <laughs> so I just kind of told her a little bit at a time. I said, well, you know what's going to happen here. We don't have time to go back and we're going to miss her flight. We've got to preach tomorrow. We won't be able to make her flight. And so, you know, this, look at this. Could you please pay attention to stuff like this? And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of riding it a little bit. And I said, well, uh, I guess, I guess I just have to leave you at the airport because I'm going to go preach. I am not staying here. I've got to go preach. And you stay at the airport, see if you can't get Scotty or somebody else come pick you up because I am not staying there waiting on you. Get a flight whenever you can. I'll see you at the destination. Oh, she's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Calls her mom. I said, sorry. I said, I actually have your passport in my briefcase, and so uh, we'll be just fine. Oh, you got my passport? I said, yeah, man. Ain't you glad I'm smart? Anyway, so you married a smart man. I carried that. <laughs> So a lot of times people know, come on, they have some identification, they just don't carry it with them. Come on, it's not enough for you to know a sermon like this and the word on this subject. You have to carry that identification with you because you're not what your mama made you. You're not what your past made you. You're not what mistakes made you. You're not what other people say you are. Come on, you are exactly who God says you are, amen. You've been refathered by God. Who's your daddy now, amen? In other words, I've been refathered, born again. A new kind of creature. Come on, wouldn't you have loved to have been there and heard people talk about Jesus and say, what manner of man is this? What kind of guy is this? You know, walking on water, casting out devils, healing the sea. What kind of man is this? Come on, they should be saying that about us. What kind of a person are you? 
Amen. When you're carrying the life of God, no devil can dominate you. Sin cannot dominate you. Old habits cannot dominate you. You got the life of God on the inside of you. Now, if you can't shout about that, I just don't think I can help you. I said, if you can't shout about that, I don't think I can help you. So that we see what the Word has to say about it. But there's something about the Ephesians 1 prayer that Dad Hagen said, go through the Scriptures. And then he said, pray the Ephesians 1 and pray it every day. Don't miss a day. Every day for at least six months. So I'm 17 years old. So me and Leon, so we start off by writing the Ephesians prayer in about 30 different translations. And so, so we're saying, God, this is what I'm asking you for. Father God, I'm asking you that you would give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened are flooded with light that I may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and you put all things under his feet gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that fills all in all yeah. 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 so notice this about that prayer because we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God but we also know in this prayer in Ephesians 1, he says, this is going to affect your eyes. All right, let's try this one more time. I said, this is going to affect your eyes. The eyes. Your eyes. Your eyes. Let's talk about your eyes. Or talk about your vision. Or talk about the way you see. Or talk about what you see. Y'all still here? So the spirit of wisdom changes the way you see. In other words, to take the word from just hearing to seeing. All right, let's try this out over here. In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to take it from just a hearing thing to vision, seeing. So you begin to see your identification with Christ. All right? So I'm praying this prayer. I didn't miss a day. Dad Hagen said don't miss a day, so I just did what he said. So I mainly did it twice a day. So I had uh, 17 years old, had uh, bell-bottom blue jeans, uh, platform shoes, you know, taller, right? Now skinnier back in those days. And uh, big Afro hairdo, you know, big collar shirt, holes and patches. So some of you think that's some new thing. This has been around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've, we've got pictures, you know, like low. I would say, what was going through that guy's mind? So, <laughs> and so you you pull that card out of your back pocket twice a day. Why? In this prayer, Paul is not praying for dedication. All my life in church, all you could hear is dedication. Why you ain't dedicated when you don't come to prayer? Why don't you quit sinning? I wish you'd quit sinning. And you're like, well, that ain't working, is it? So, so you're like, dedication, you need to pray more, give more, show up more. Not, there's not one dedication in Ephesians 1. So the greatest need of the believer. All right, let's try it one more time. Your greatest need as a believer is not try harder. Your greatest need as a believer is the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God because every breakthrough in faith will come from a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of the death, burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. 
What happened from the cross to the throne in those three days changed everything. God is planting a whole new crop of righteousness, wisdom, redemption, sanctification, blessing, joy, and victory on the inside of you. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. The book, The Power of Identification with Christ, is just for you. You have a spiritual identity. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. The spirit of wisdom and revelation of God will show you who you are in Christ. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's word and move your mountain and overcome the adversity and any challenge you're facing today. You will also receive Pastor Mark's book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Your confession of faith brings you into the consciousness of who you are in Christ. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the books, The Power of Identification with Christ, and Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were blessed and you were encouraged. And you know, my dad always brings a challenging word to challenge your faith and your belief. We want to get this word to you and we want to get faith opens the door to the supernatural to your home and to your life and into your heart. So for your gift of any amount, we can get this book to you. But I want you to know where your gift is going toward. It is going toward completing the Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. So this is a huge investment for us and for you. So thank you for going on there, ordering the book. We want it to be a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us again today. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.